Welcome to Photo Finds. I am your host, Kevin E. We've got a lot of ground to cover. Let's get started this week. We're at the Magic Kingdom, the Tangled Meet and Greet, that is for Flynn Rider as well as Rapunzel, has moved away from the castle so they can do some construction there and has moved over to Town Square where you can now meet Rapunzel uh, at certain times of the day in the area next to City Hall. Just to the left of that, in the entrance tunnel, you'll see a new sign here for the Sunshine Tree Terrace. Let's take a closer look. This marks the return of the Orange Bird, a mascot from the 1970s, to the Magic Kingdom. There's a lot of nostalgia driving the Orange Bird return, and you'll see that there are some pieces of merchandise available, like the $25 t-shirt, the $40 mounted poster, which is the same thing you saw under the train station, uh, a second kind of t-shirt, and several of these pins have been available for some time. The Sunshine Tree Terrace is at the exit to the Enchanted Tiki Room and was once sponsored by the Florida Citrus Growers, which had this orange bird mascot. Now, he wasn't um, always on the sign like this. He was uh, inside here where there was a, a bit of a tree, uh, and uh, this is inside now. They're selling these, um, these, these juice cups, and there's the official or an original figure that was once uh, inside this area has been found and returned to its home in the Sunshine Tree Terrace, along with the, uh, the sort of now becoming famous citrus swirl, a bit like a Dole Whip, but with uh, orange slush uh, rather than, uh, and, and with uh, soft serve ice cream, rather than just with the Dole Whip flavors. Let's take a quick look at Fantasyland, where we're looking somewhat near the um, Mad Tea Party here. These caves uh, and the coverings over them are recently added. Uh, and as you see, they're slightly different design from the rock work behind it, which is older and has been visible for some time in Fantasyland. And see, they've got still a piece of it to make uh, that connects up with Storybook Circus. Here is another view of the Beast Castle, as well as the Seven Dwarfs Mine Coaster, taken from the Storybook Circus area. This is on the other side, over by Pinocchio Village House. This is uh, the back castle wall, and uh, this is, I guess, a part of the back castle wall as well, uh, constructed on the site of the, the former site of where Dumbo was. Speaking of Dumbo, we are atop Dumbo as we take this picture. I've got several shots for you like this looking into the uh, Seven Dwarfs Mine area. You can see some of the pylons going up here as well as that wall we've seen from previous angles. Let's take a closer look here from this side. There's that tall wall and back here is one of the, um, the Beauty and the Beast area buildings. And then this is also taken from Dumbo, but looking at that section of the new caves and the, uh, the bridge kind of concept into Storybook Circus, another view kind of the same area. And then an over-the-wall shot of the KC Jr. Um, splash zone. <clears throat> this is um, taken a little bit more than a week ago, so there's been some additional uh, additions since then. The KC Jr. front car, or the engine itself, has been added, for instance, in the meantime. Over at Downtown Disney and Marketplace, the Basin restaurant, or not restaurant, the Basin um, Soap Store has had a minor remodel, and they've got the soap sculpture in the middle here. That's kind of interesting to look at. The store remains largely the same experience as it was before. Last year's shuffle of shops in Downtown Disney resulted in such things as the Magnetron uh, closing down and creating room for uh, a blink by wet seal in the marketplace or in the downtown area, <clears throat> in the west side area. And the Magnetron became uh, just a kiosk here next to Marketplace Fun Finds. So this is in the area of the pin trading zone. Nameworks has taken up um, location here in the other kiosk to the left here. This is also near Little Mismatched. And this kiosk was formerly home to the Leftorium, or the left-handed store. Uh, this change occurred back in December, apparently. It's been that long since I've been over to the Marketplace area. Time certainly flies when you're having fun. $20 up to $40 for your name as a work of art. A little bit further in the marketplace, you'll find that the Rainforest Cafe is open while under construction. They've got these tall walls going up, um, and then the signs there that they are still open. Here's a concept art of what's coming, um, a revised volcano. And as we go look around the corner here, this is the giant mushroom, we can see the volcano under construction in the background there. Just a collection of steel girders at the moment. Lefty's the left-hand store has moved to the other side of Marketplace Fun Find, so it's still around. It is facing the carousel, so the carousel is behind me as I take this picture. Test Track has closed down, and in the meantime, um, they've got a bit of an all-stars show for you, which plays several times a day. There's the Test Track closed, reopening, as it says, in fall 2012. 
Um, not too much is known about um, what is happening. It will have a different kind of aesthetic and look to it that is inspired by Tron. Disney's recently released a photo on their Parks blog of um, what will happen, uh, you know, sort of aesthetically speaking. The cars will all be looking like blue neon and, and um, semi-futuristic in that sense. And the word is that we'll be um, focused more on the production manufacture of the car uh, rather than on the testing of the car. I imagine that the test track part will be just the outside part of what we um, eventually get on the ride. And uh, they have said in official press releases that the car ex or the experience will be about uh, designing your own car. So that may be part of the queue or maybe part of um, the indoor part of the attraction. In the meantime, though, since this is closed for several months, including the busy summer months, they've come up with a, a singing group, an a cappella singing group, who comes on out and um, performs um, songs that you probably don't know, um, but with a, a, as high energy as they can muster. And while I was passing through Mouse Gear, I saw a new 2012 shirt for Epcot that I thought I would share. And then switching over on this past Sunday to Animal Kingdom, where it was a couple of things. First, it was Earth Day, and Disney's recently released this chimpanzee movie, so they've got another sand sculpture like the one they have in Epcot over here at Animal Kingdom. Uh, Earth Day is also the anniversary of the Animal Kingdom Park's opening. It opened in 1998, which makes this the 14th anniversary of the park. It'll be the 15th anniversary next year. <clears throat> this is in the Oasis. As you can see, they've got a party for the planet in your backyard. They're handing out information cards and trying to get people to think about uh, doing uh, things that preserve their own backyard, really, for nature. So here's the fun day activities. As you can see, you're pointed to a couple places, Africa, Asia, and then especially Rafiki's Planet Watch um, for the special ceremonies. Now here's something on Discovery Island just a little display and then when you make it to Rafiki's Planet Watch you will discover what I always think of the first time I encounter um, the planet and the environment an automobile um, not sure what this is doing here exactly apart from the obvious sponsorship connection what we're really here for is this um, this display party for the planet where you can read about the birds and hear about the birds uh, and it, that, that original postcard that you saw a few slides ago is designed like a scavenger hunt. And you show up at these various booths and they talk to you, they sign the card, and they perhaps hand you a button. You'll see buttons in a few moments. Now this glider display here at Rafiki's Planet Watch is new as well. Uh, that's a, an unrelated piece of theming to the area. Over in the back here you can see the chimpanzee display where you can take your picture as though you're in the jungles and then some of the other displays along the back wall here we'll take a closer look at the chimpanzee research center where they've got a touch screen smart board um, this back zone here just next to the animal hospital where you learn a little bit more about chimpanzees specifically and then face painting outside and so on those are the buttons uh, where they hand them out to you when you go and interact with them about their um, their little poster so switching to Epcot, we are at Innoventions where the Vision House just um, opened. It's soft opened, or actually officially opened this past Sunday. That would be uh, April 22nd. Uh, here were the opening day ceremonies. Uh, and the Vision House, as you can see, is in the home of the future spot. Uh, it's not called the House of the Future anymore, although it is kind of the same concept, though redone now specifically for being green, being environmentally aware and friendly. This is an outside shot of the of the same area. This is the back angle, so to speak. We were moments ago over here, over by some of all thrills, taking a picture of the front. This is taking a picture of the back angle. There's also a Chevy Volt on the outside of the uh, house to the right of that last picture. So here we are stepping into the house. They've got kind of a living area on the one spot on the one side and a dining area on the other. Um, as they as you get walked through a group of about 20 with a, a live host, they tell you things like uh, the nature of the recycled materials used to build the the chairs here or what the hardwood flooring is like or the energy star um, appliances or how you can look up menus and so forth with this kind of iPad display uh, it's a little bit of a dry walk through some future technologies that are actually available today so they're not really future technologies in every sense of the word um, it's really very environmentally friendly technologies more so than future technologies as you can see, we've gone through a couple of bedrooms there at the end as well. Uh, there's the modern day bathroom and the toilet, which uh, not only will flush uh, by push of a button, there's a light interrupt here you can use to raise and lower the seat at will. 
Then you step into the back of the house. This is meant to be the outdoors, though it was, of course, covered. We're inside Interventions, where you'll find a miniature uh, greenhouse, uh, a living wall full of fake plants, but it, they do something like that at Flower and Garden in Epcot anyway, so I understand where they're coming from. A discussion of the tiles and the various rooftop things you can do to absorb smog and capture the, um, the sun's rays, for instance. I wanted to take a brief moment to tell you about my new publication. This is new this month. It's a uh, travel guide to Disneyland Paris where there aren't um, too many books. There are a few that tell you uh, everything you need to know. Uh, mine is would be about 70 pages of printed. This is a Kindle book only. It's only electronic for the moment. Uh, and it focuses very tightly on the travel experience. It tells you how to get to Paris, uh, from Paris over to the, um, to the resort. It tells you um, your various options. There's the train, there's the bus, there's uh, taxi options, and shuttle options, renting a car perhaps. And then uh, it tells you with equal amounts of detail uh, where you need to go, where you need to stand, what, um, what kind of tickets you need to buy and so forth for both the travel over and the travel back. Uh, and then in regards to the park itself, it gives you really just the top tips. Um, the, the idea behind this guidebook is not to tell you every last detail and spoil every last thing about the rides for you, so much as just arm you with what you would need to enjoy your experience once you go. So have a look for it on Kindle. It is only $2.99 um, and priced accordingly in other countries if you're watching this from other countries. So please have a look and I thank you once again for stopping by. We'll catch you next week.